with T-Quilts and today I'm working on the Gill optional block again and we're working on this pineapple block and I am showing you this page because it has the full pineapple row layout I will at the end of this video pop up two pictures that will show you how to put this block together so that you will have all of the instructions now I want to talk about what we need to make this block. Since I'm only making one block, I'm doing mines a little differently. You can see here where we have half square triangles. And they're telling you to cut two larger squares that you're going to draw along diagonally. And so on each side. And then you'll have four half square triangles. I would normally follow those instructions if I was doing multiple blocks in the same quilt. Like if I was making a lot of pineapple blocks in one quilt, then I would do it that way. But since I'm only making one block and they want it scrappy, I am not going to do it the way the instructions state. So I'm going to give you the way that the instructions state for you that have the directions, but I'm just going to talk about what I'm going to do differently. So as you can see here in rows three through seven, we're mostly having scrappy yellow bits and my printer ink needed to be changed, but I wasn't going to reprint it just for this video, but you get the idea. But I need five rows of four yellows. And so what I did was I just went ahead and cut 20 yellow squares that are two and one half inches. And then up here for the green rows, you can see that I have green in six spaces. So I went ahead and cut six green two and one half inch squares. And then for my whites, you can see where I have two solid white squares. So in addition to the two solid white squares, I'm also needing four half square triangles with the green and four half square triangles with the yellow. So therefore, I am cutting ten two and one half inch squares so let's go back over what we need for this project we need ten white two and a half inch squares we need six green two and a half inch squares and then we need twenty yellow two and one half inch squares and this is if you are making the block only making one block and trying to make it scrappy on my Cutting board, I now have just four of the ten white squares on the back of eight of them. I'm only showing you four because that's what's fitting in my screen right now. But we're going to do this to the back of eight of these squares. We're going to go to the back side on the wrong side of the fabric. We're going to draw a line from corner to corner. And then I'm also going to go ahead and draw a line one half inch away from the corner. And I'm doing that because this is just going to be an extra half square triangle that I can square up to one and a half inch that I can use in some future project. I just don't throw away anything that is usable. So let me just show you how you would do that. I normally would use my board, but for right now I'm just going to use my cutting mat. I would use like a sandpaper board, but I don't have that in my area right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So I would do that to all eight of my squares. I'm going to not do it on the back of two squares. So I just have my other four here and I'm going to do that to a total of eight squares. So for this next step, I'm just going to show you on two, but you need to take four of your yellow pieces and then four of your green pieces you're actually going to put these eight squares that have the marks on them right sides together and then you're going to sew on the drawn line so i'm going to do that for all eight of these squares and then i will be right back i have sewn all of my half square triangles i have sewn on both 
of the drawn lines that I put on the back of the light squares. And then I just took a pair of scissors and just cut straight through the middle. You can use a rotary cutter if you like. Whatever you have available. When they're small, I don't mind using a pair of scissors. So when I did that, I have lots of extra half square triangles that are not going to go into the quilt. So I have a total of eight of these. I will just put these up and use them somewhere else. You can press your seams toward the dark if you like. But because I'm just used to pressing my seams open, I just pressed all of my seams open. And I have all eight half square triangles here. So I'm going to go press this seam open and then I'll be right back. Pressing is now all done. The next step that I need to do is I just need to lay out my pieces according to this grid. So I am going to do that and then I will be right back. So here's the pineapple layout. It's actually laid out in a four by seven setting. And so you have four blocks going across, two, three, four, and then seven blocks going down. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you need 28, two and a half inch blocks to finish. So they could be either solid squares or they can be half square triangle squares. So now the next step is just to sew this into a larger block so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do some chain piecing i'm actually going to be flipping my rows so that i can add as i go and just chain piece down and then when i get to the end i will leave all of this chain so i will go ahead and sew that and then i will come back and show you this section I have sewn this chain piece together. These blocks would go right here. And so I have just stitched along the side seams. And if you need to check to make sure that your pieces are in the right positions, you can just open them up. Then you can go back and look at your layout to make sure that everything is orientated in a correct position. And so now that I have this part chained for my third row and my consecutive rows, I'm just going to pick these pieces up and then I will just take them one by one and sew one onto each piece. And I will do that all the way down to the bottom. So I'll come back when I have all of these pieces connected. All of my rows are sewn onto their respective columns. And so now if I pull these slightly apart, you can see that they're still connected. And if I lift it up, everything is in the right order. So before I sew my columns together, I like to just lay everything out and make sure that everything is going in the right direction. And that's very important when you're chain piecing rows like this because you don't want to start sewing your columns together and something is turned and it's going to be a lot harder to uh, use your seam ripper to get the piece out so now all i have to do now is just flip my pieces over and just sew my columns together so i'm going to go do that and i will come back with the completed block Here is my completed block. It's very pretty. I wish that I could keep it, but I am going to donate it. I have a few strings here that I need to remove. It seems like I have so many strings in my work area. And then when I did the rows, I just pressed those seams open as well. Um, you know, it depends on what the person that receives them is going to do with them. So I just like to press things open if they wanted to put block to block and just make like a row with no sashing. Or if they put sashing, they still have, you know, the same seams or okay, no matter what. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this block, the pineapple block. And again, at the end of this video, I will add the instructions for you to complete this block for yourself. I will see you next time. Bye bye everybody.